ஹாய் கேன் வெல்கம் பேக் டு இஎன்ஐ செவன் எயிட் எயிட் எம் ஹேண்ட்ஸ் ஆன் அட்டானமஸ் ஏரியல் ரோபாட்டிக்ஸ் இந்த லாஸ்ட் கிளாஸ் வி டாக் அபவுட் அ லீனியர் கால்மன் ஃபில்டர் அண்ட் அ பீஜியன் ஃபில்டர் ரைட் அண்ட் வி சேட் ஓகே இட்ஸ் நாட் த பெஸ்ட் இன் த வேர்ல்ட் ஸோ ஹவு கேன் வி இம்ப்ரூவ் டுடே வி ஆர் கோன் டு டாக் அபவுட் இட்ஸ் எக்ஸ்டென்ஷன் வேரியன்ஸ் ஸோ நேம்லி தி எக்ஸ்டெண்டட் கால்மன் ஃபில்டர் அண்ட் தி அன்சென்டட் கால்மன் ஃபில்டர் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கொஸ்டின் எனிபடி இஸ் கோன் ஆஸ்க் இஸ் வை வை யூஸ் அன் எக்ஸ்டெண்டட் கால்மன் ஃபில்டர் so the answer is as follows right real life system dynamics and observation models are la- rarely globally linear so what do we do so however they can be often approximated very well as linear functions locally so the next question is how do we linearize functions this is from our calculus class right we use taylor expansion and we use jacobians so the filter using these things and you attach all these things to a kalman filter it's called an extended kalman filter because it's literally an extension of the kalman filter equations with these little uh, tricks from calculus thrown in right and it's abbreviated as ekf so what are the ekf assumptions they're very similar to the kalman filter assumptions so let's go through them one by one quickly so the prior again is a gaussian distribution the continuous time process model f is a nonlinear function with addi- additive white gaussian noise the continuous time process model is given by an ordinary differential equation so notice here the main difference is that the function is nonlinear and it's given by an ode instead of a linear function everything else remains the same as the kalman filter we use the same gaussian distribution as the prior we use the additional wi- additive white gaussian noise as before and the observation model again h is nonlinear with additive white gaussian noise so this is the difference from the linear kalman filter wherein this was linear as well but the gaussian noise remains the same right so let's uh, move on so the first thing we want to see is the prediction or the linear the for the prediction is the linearization step so what we want to do is linearize the system dynamics which was given by the ode before about the current uh, current estimate of my state or the previous state which is my current estimate right and the control input and zero noise so that will look something like this so this is just a first order taylor approximation and we give nice little names for each of these uh, partial derivatives as a b and u capitals and bold it just to make life easier right so uh, if this is not familiar i would say revisit how a taylor expansion works uh, and i think for this purposes of brevity i don't want to explain the whole thing again right and uh, as a physical intuition you have some nonlinear function g which is shown on the right here uh, and it's like some nonlinear function and the first order taylor approximation is just drawing a tangent at that point x right that's that's the idea here so next for the update step we also have another linearization step we said because that's also nonlinear so again we want to linearize the observation model about my predicted state mu and zero noise right and that is again shown here which is simple calculus tricks like first order taylor approximation and we give nice little names for each of these partial derivatives as capital c and capital w and uh, it would look exactly the same so to summarize the extended kalman filter has the same steps as before in the linear kalman filter case the prediction step the update step and the two assumptions which we talked about before and it also adds these things in orange which is the linearization discretization and the linearization again on the update step right so i this uh, this slide should basically serve as a uh, easy guide for you to implement and i think it's fairly easy to work these out why this is correct so like we talked about in the kalman filter case we said okay why do we want to do a kalman filter let's talk about the same for an extended kalman filter why or why not do we want to use any kf right so let's go through the advantages first so it's simple like like the linear kalman filter just added a taylor approximation so it again uses matrix operations so it's super efficient so because of this it can be easily implementable on embedded platforms so this is not much exponentially more heavier than the kalman filter depending on how big is your state and how comp- how expensive your jacobians are so again it works very well with generic process and observation models so you can just derive one generic process model one generic observation model and generally use it 
across various uh, various robotic platforms or systems and it works well right so the disadvantages are as follows so we need to compute these stinky jacobians for process and observation models so people don't really like it because it's very rigorous mathematically in most cases and it's pretty painful to compute these things by hand or using computers right so nowadays you can use like a symbolic toolbox in matlab or python to do these things for you but they will not simplify them though so that's why then it would become really cumbersome and it defeats the advantage of it being simple right so that's why people don't really like these stinky jacobians and uh, it can only again deal with uh, unimodal distributions as before like just like the kalman filter because we just put a tangent line with the taylor approximation and nothing changes that so the question is can we do better than just simply linearizing using a taylor series right like that's an obvious question anybody is going to think of let's go through a procedure which can help us do this so assume you have the gaussian distribution and i have carefully selected some magical points so shown here and these are color coded so that it's easy when we transform stuff around so these are these special points are called sigma points and they are denoted by this fancy script letter x and let's pass this through some nonlinear function and apply the nonlinearity right remember before we had this nonlinear function we took a taylor approximation yeah none of those stuff here we just have a uh, empirical function which we can compute apply it on these special points and this function f gives us these transformed sigma points right so the special points are called sigma points denoted by script letter x and these are the transformed sigma points transformed by this fancy nonlinear function f so now what i want to do is okay now i want to recompute a gaussian around these guys so like i said before and uh, a small caveat here is that these points are not just transformed directly but i also want to have some weights associated with it right so i don't want to equally uh, take the contribution equally when i compute the gaussian that's why if you see this it's not exactly centered it's uh, skewed to some of the points so that's because of that so how do we compute these weights how do we transform these things we will see later so in summary we took some of these special points which i'm shown in color and we literally took an uncentered transform and we fancified this function and we recomputed the gaussian right so again we took some points we called it the sigma points denoted by script letter x we put it through a nonlinear function f and then we recomputed the gaussian around it this whole procedure is called the uncentered transform so now let's uh, talk a few more things about the sigma points right remember again we did this transformation so the simplest function f is the identity uh, we should get back the same gaussian right like if you put in an identity function we should get back the same gaussian then if not then it doesn't really serve much so we want to select our sigma points and weights uh, associated with each of these sigma points denoted by w such that it follows these things right so the sum of all the weights should be one which is kind of obvious and the mean is computed as the weighted sum of the means and the sigma points and the covariance is the empirical covariance along with the weight of course if you are not uh, if you haven't realized this there is no unique solution for this right there can be any number of solutions it's not well bounded so that's that's one thing to be aware of so now let's talk a little more about sigma points so so like you can choose uh, 2n plus 1 sigma points for example which is uh, which is uh, uh, given in this uh, paper by uh, eric wan and uh, rudolf van der marwe the uncentered kalman filter for nonlinear estimation right so the first sigma point is the mean because mean is nice to have and then you have uh, 2n sigma points where the first n are distributed on the positive side of the mean with this uh, square root of the co scale square uh, square root of the covariance matrix and the other half is on the opposite side the negative side of it right so the square root here is the matrix square root the n represents the state dimensionality and uh, lambda is a scaling parameter which you choose and i just represents that it's a column vector right so the matrix square root uh, any matrix a can be defined as uh, s into s then s is defined is denoted or defined as the square root of a this 
thing can be computed using diagonal diagonalization but it's generally unstable and prone to a lot of numerical errors so instead we formulate the matrix square root as follows we say a is some matrix s into s transpose then s is again called the square root right it's called the cholsky matrix square root instead of the normal square root right cholsky matrix square root is nice because it has like nice properties about stability and it's numerically very efficient to compute sigma points don't necessarily have to lie on the eigen basis of sigma this is kind of not obvious but here is an empirical example where that is not the case at all right so you can just wonder about why that is so so let's continue talking about the weights so the equations for the weight from the marway paper are given here uh, the derivation for this is beyond the scope of this class and we don't have to worry about that we just have to understand the physical intuition we have a few parameters here the kappa value is greater than or equal to zero alpha belongs to the open set zero and closed set one and lambda is given as follows which depends on the dimensionality kappa alpha and lambda determine the spread of the sigma points around the mean and beta is chosen to be two which is like the optimal choice for cautions right so if i increase kappa alpha and lambda the spread uh, of the sigma points increases and if i drop the values of kappa alpha and gamma the value decreases and the spread goes down right this is shown in the image here so to summarize the unscented kalman filter has two steps prediction and update as before like just like the linear kalman filter or the extended kalman filter so in the prediction step what we do is we take the uh, sigma points from the previous step and we basically apply it through a nonlinear function f then we take the weighted uh, weighted mean that gives us the predicted mean and we take the covariance as shown before and then the covariance is computed from these these values right for the update step we take the nonlinear function g we apply it again on the sigma points and then we compute these things which are called the cross covariance matrix which is denoted as sigma bar t comma xz and that's like the weighted combination between the sigma points and the predicted mean uh, the subtraction of sigma points and the predicted mean and the update step and the uh, predicted step right and uh, so that will finally then we apply the kalman gain to it and then we obtain the final prediction mu and sigma note that uh, the edgar craft paper which you are going to use to implement project 1b uses a slightly different formulation but it's very equivalent so what we would rec recommend for the project is you implement the edgar craft paper because it's slightly easier to understand than this approach right so now let's uh, look at the ukf versus ekf for a 1d example like if you look at the leftmost plot there is a non there is a very weird nonlinear fancy function p of y which is not at all unimodal in this case it has like a, a lot of modes like at least three right and uh, if you look at the mean from the ekf and the ukf you would observe that the ukf mean is very much closer than the ekf mean to the real one right so and that's shown here so if we take the covariance down and make the distribution more or less unimodal so the ekf and ukf mean almost converge with respect to each other which is kind of what we expected because that's the assumption of an ekf and in this kind of cases using ekf is much faster than ukf and is beneficial though we have to compute these stinky jacobians by hand or using a computer right so just to summarize again so in an actual case we have uh, mean and covariance we put it through nonlinear function and we have the true mean and covariance which we don't know we want to estimate right in the extended kalman filter case we linearize about the first thing and then we approximate this and then we find that pink thing which is not exactly very close in the uncentered transform case we take the sigma points we apply this fancy function we do the sigma point computation we uh, do the nonlinear transformation on the sigma points and all that stuff and then we compute the weighted uh, or the transform sigma points we compute the weighted mean and covariance and we see that it's much closer to the actual mean than compared to the ekf right now go track some attitude with the ukf and have fun uh, see you again in the next class bye